Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. And in today's video, we are going to cover the human skeleton, specifically the axial skeleton. In a follow-up video, I will be covering the appendicular skeleton. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe, turn your notifications on because I post a video every Tuesday and Thursday for grades 8 to 12 life sciences or biology. Now we're focusing in today's video on the axial skeleton and the two major components of the axial skeleton is the skull as well as the vertebral column. I'm going to go through all of the bones you need to know, how to tell the difference between them as well as how to label a skeleton if you were to get one in an exam. So let's begin with the skull. Now, it's really important for everyone to know that this entire structure collectively is the skull. Everything, all the smaller bones that it is made out of. And often we don't know that there are sections to the skull that have different names. The first section of the skull I want to talk about is this top area over here, along with the dome at the back. That over there is your cranium. And so your cranium is the casing that sits around your brain. The next bone I want to focus on is this one over here. It is the bone that sits around your eye. It is called the zygomatic bone. In some textbooks, it calls it also the orbit bone as well. The next bone that we have inside of the skull is called the maxillary bone, also known as the upper jaw bone. This is the uh, part of your jaw bone that doesn't move. It's still, it's static. The lower portion of your jaw, this bit at the bottom here that you can move, is known as the mandible. Um, and the nice way to remember the difference between maxilla and mandible is mandible is movable. It is the movable part of your jaw. You can't move the top part of your jaw. That's fixed in place. Now, if we look at some specifics about the cranium, you'll notice that the cranium has these like squiggly lines through them. And what they are, they're not fractures um, in the cranium. They are what we call sutures. They're basically where your bones have fused together as you've aged. And the reason for that is your cranium is in pieces when you're born. It's not completely solid um, so that you can move through the birth canal a lot easier. Now, these different regions of the skull also tell us the regions of your brain. So there's a nice little overlap. If you know um, the name of the bone uh, of that part of the cranium, you also know the part of the brain. And so first of all, we have this front portion of the cranium, which is known as the frontal bone. Then we have the uh, top major side area of your uh, head here, which is the parietal part of the skull. We then have uh, this bone sitting on the side here called your temporal bone, uh, where your temples are, so the sides of your head. And then the final bone is this back part of the bone here, which is your occipital bone. I know that's so uh, weird because occipital means eye. It's because actually the point at which your eyes connect to your brain is actually at the back of your brain. Um, and so those are all the labels that you will need to know for tests and exams. Right, then moving on to the vertebral column. The vertebral column is divided into five major regions, starting off with the first seven sets of bones at the very top, which is the cervical bones, and we label them C1 to C7. Then beyond that, we have the thoracic bones, um, and there are about 12 of them. So one, two, three, four, five, that's where it cuts off over there. Um, and these are numbered 1 to 12. Then below that, you have the lumbar region, which is your biggest vertebra. And then you have a divide that sits sort of at an angle here. That is your sacral bones. There are five of them down here. And then this teeny tiny little bone right at the bottom um, is your coccygeal bone. And it is made up of four bones. You'll notice is that the sacral bone and the coccygeal bone just have the number four and five? That's because those bones are fused together. So we just count them as five bones that make one very big bone. 
The next important step about the vertebral column and the vertebral bones is we need to know their structures. And you are looking at a typical vertebral bone. Um, I'm going to go through the specifics of how to tell the difference between them soon. But there are some important labels and things that you need to look out for when you are trying to label this. First of all, um, a key thing to look for is the spinous process. This is this little pointy bit out at the top that actually tells you a lot of information. It tells you which kind of vertebra you're looking at. Is it long? Is it short? Is it not there at all? That will definitely tell you which bone you're looking at. And also, this is the little bone that sticks out to your skin. It's the part of the vertebra that you can feel. The next important part of a vertebra which tells you which uh, vertebra it is, is also known as the body or the centrum. They're both correct. And basically it refers to this entire um, back portion of the bone. It's where the majority of the body weight is also pushed through in that area. Then we have something called the transverse process. And the transverse process uh, refers to these like little uh, elongated pieces of bone that go off to the left and the right. They sort of look like little wings on either side. Then you have something called the articular processes. Um, and the facets. And essentially what these are, if I put them in a different color, you have uh, two on either side over here. You've got two on the ends of your transverse processes and you've got actually two at the back here. All of those facets are for other bones to rub up against. They might be there for ribs. They might be there for other vertebra to rub up against. And that's their purpose to make space for other bones. The next important component of any vertebra is to make space for the spinal cord. And what we have here is the vertebral arch and the vertebral foramen. And foramen means like a hole where a nerve can pass through. So the arch is the arch and the bone. And then the foramen is this hole in the center. That's where the um, spinal cord will move through. And um, in some textbooks, they call it a neural arch and a neural canal. Those are both correct as well. Now, also depending on your level of education in terms of like what grade you are, if you're watching this video, but also what type of um, education you're doing, IEB or NSC, you might need to know a few more labels. And so I'm just going to go through these other two, which is the lamina, which is these walls at the top here of the arch, and then the pedicle, which is this joining part of the bone. So the lamina and the pedicle both form like these joins between the transverse process, the spinous process, and the centrum. So let's look at the first two cervical vertebrae. They are one of the most important pairs of vertebrae because they allow you to have full mobility in your neck and they enable you to nod your head and also um, turn your head and rotate your head. And we're going to start off with the atlas bone, which is this one over here. And uh, the atlas bone has these lovely articulating surfaces. They're very, very, very large on either side here. And that's basically where your skull uh, uh, rests upon your vertebral columns. So they're going to be quite big. And then this central area over here, the neural um, canal, is very, very large. And that's because the spinal cord leaves the brain first through this opening. So it's the biggest part of your spinal cord. Now, when it comes to identifying the atlas bone in a diagram, there are a few things I want you to look out for. When we're identifying it, we're looking out for the fact that it's not going to have a centrum. It's missing that big, chunky, round bottom bit. Um, and the next thing you're going to look out for, as I just pointed out earlier, was the articulating surface is quite large. It's that big blue area I've highlighted. The last thing is it has the largest canal. It has the biggest neural canal or um, vertebral canal that runs down the middle there with the foramen being the biggest. If you compare it to its neighbor, you can see it's much smaller. And speaking of its neighbor, let's move on to the next bone here, which is the axis bone. So this is the second cervical bone. Now, this cervical bone uh, is very important because it allows you to rotate your head. So the atlas allows you to nod and the axis allows you to rotate. And it's also got some key features which are slightly different to its neighbor. First of all, looking at this tip of the bone here, this is the spinous process. The next notable feature is these large articulating uh, parts of its bone over here, which is where, again, these two articulating surfaces rub up against its neighbor. Because this is the first bone of the vertebra, it sits on top of the axis, which is the second bone. And so you need this big area for it to sit on top of that. And the final thing that makes it very unique is this structure here, which is not so clear when we look at the bone from the top. So if we look at the bone from the side, um, what we are looking at here is this pointy bit over here in the bone. It actually sticks all the way up. 
That is called the odontoid process. And that is the thing that allows you to rotate your head. It allows your um, atlas to spin or move and rotate around it. Now, when identifying the axis, we're looking for the following things. First things first, we are looking for a forked spinal process. We're looking for that peg-like odontoid process, as I just pointed out now. It doesn't have any transverse processes, so it's missing those little side wings. They're not really there. And it also has quite a large neural canal. Now we're moving into the three other components of your vertebral column. I'd like to point out that the atlas and the axis are cervical bones. Um, and so the rest of the cervical bones are just standard cervical bones. There's nothing special about them, but their shape does change and alter over time. And so what you see in front of you here are the three other varieties that you get. We have the cervical bone over here, the thoracic bone, and then finally the lumbar. Now, um, in terms of what you're looking for and to tell the difference, there are some key things that you need to ask yourself when you're trying to tell the difference between these bones in a test or an exam. The first thing you're going to look at is, is there a centrum? So what's the size of the centrum? And then is it even there or not? Now, in these three bones, they all have centrums, which is this area of the bone down here. But they're all different sizes. And in the atlas and the axis, they're both lacking it. So if there isn't a centrum, it must be the at uh, atlas or the axis. But for the rest of these, there must be one of them. And you'll notice that the centrum gets bigger as we go down the spinal cord. The next thing you're going to look at is the neural canal. So the size of the neural canal. Now, the size of the neural canal does get smaller and smaller as we go down. It's a little bit deceiving in this picture um, because the middle one looks the smallest. But in actual fact, it's the second smallest. So generally, we start off with the biggest neural canal, which is true. This is the cervical bone, which means it's closest to the spinal cord coming out of the head. Then we have the thoracic, which is a little bit deceiving. It makes it look a bit small. And then the lumbar. Technically, the lumbar should have the smallest hole um, because it's the furthest away from the spinal cord. Or should I say it's the furthest from where the spinal cord leaves the brain through the skull. The next thing that you're going to look at, and this is more of a cheat sheet, everybody. So this is not something that I would write in an exam. Like I wouldn't write this down as a reason, but I would use this to tell the difference. Um, thoracic vertebra generally have more of a V shape to them. Let's just go over that with a darker red. A V shape to their transverse processes. Whereas uh, lumbar have more of a T shape to them. And so that's like one easy way to identify them, which brings me to the third point. The transverse process, is it present or absent? In cervical bones, like this one over here alongside, there is no transverse process. If you look here, there's nothing there. There's nothing sticking out. However, in the thoracic and lumbar, it is there. And as I mentioned now, you can look for the two different shapes to tell the difference. The final component of the vertebral column is the sacral and coccygeal bones. And when we talk about the sacral bones, we're talking about this region at the top here. Um, and the sacral bones are actually fused bones. So it means that the bones are stuck together. They're not like individuals. You can actually see the fusion lines going down through here. And then the second set of bones, which is this lower portion at the bottom over here, is called the coccygeal bones. We often like call these the coccyx bone or the tailbone. And that, again, is fused bones at the bottom. And you can see them fused here together. So let's go through a terminology recap because there was a lot of terminology, as you can see. And please use these words for your flashcards when you're studying. So we're starting off with the axial skeleton, which is made up of the skull um, as well as the vertebral column, the vertebra. And um, the skull is made up of the cranium, the zygomatic um, bone or the orbit bone, the eye bone, uh, the mandible, so the upper jaw, sorry, the lower jaw, the maxillary, which is the upper jaw. And then I spoke about something called the foramen magnum, which is the opening in the skull where the spinal cord leaves the brain. We then spoke about sutures, which are the joins in the skull, the frontal, parietal, uh, temporal and occipital are all um, regions of the cranium bones that are divided by sutures. 
when we looked at the vertebra, we looked at the cervical bones. They were the first set of bones, specifically the atlas and the axis that allow you to rotate and nod your head. We looked at the thoracic, the lumbar, the sacral, and the coccygeal. Those are all different types, and you must know how to identify them. And also, we looked at, of course, the general structure of the vertebra, the centrum, the neural canal, or the foramen, um, the transverse process, spinous process, and lastly, the articulating surfaces, which is where your bones articulate against each other, either the ribs articulating with the vertebral column or another vertebra on top of the other one, and, and they move up against each other. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on. The follow-up video to this will have the appendicular skeleton in it. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.